Here's Paul F. Tompkins. Hello. Bonsoir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am uh, Paul F. Tompkins. I live in Los Angeles, California. And I'd like to tell you a story about a place in Los Angeles, California called the Magic Castle. The Magic Castle is a private club for magicians. <laughs> this is a true thing that I have just said to you. Magicians have their own private club, and it's called the Magic Castle. This is a place where magicians can go to not get beat up, presumably. And the Magic Castle is a more elegant name than the Magic Fort. My wife very much wanted to go to the Magic Castle. We managed to get some passes. It's very exclusive, very exclusive. We got all dressed up to go, but there was something I saw there that haunts me to this day. It was a very strange thing that I couldn't process immediately. At the Magic Castle, the walls are covered floor to ceiling with magical shit. <laughs> There's just props and top hats and wands all over the place, playbills and posters just cram floor to ceiling. It's too much, frankly, and sometimes you have to just let your eyes go soft so you can remember who you are. <laughs> and so there's all these portraits of magicians, some famous, some not famous, magicians from the past, magicians from the present, none from the future, because it's the magic castle, not the science castle. And at one point, I saw a portrait of this older gentleman, and I knew instantly, as soon as I saw it, something is not right about this picture. Paul, there were real eyes in the eye holes. No, there weren't. Opportunity missed, by the way, Magic Castle. <laughs> it's just a regular old painting of this older man, but I knew, looking at it, on a cellular level, something is wrong with this painting. I stared at it, stared at it, and then all of a sudden, like a magic eye drawing, I saw it, and then it was all I could see. It was a painting of an old man. This guy was probably in his uh, late 80s, early 90s. From the looks of his clothing and the frames of his glasses, it was probably painted in the late 60s, early 70s. And I'm looking at this painting, and I realize all of a sudden very clearly that the man in this painting is wearing a toupee. It's a painting. <laughs> what kind of a creep artist <laughs> sees an old man walk into his studio wearing a toupee and says, I paint the truth, sir. <laughs> These brushes will not corroborate that lie upon your head. <laughs> then the more I thought about it, I started to get mad at the old man, because why didn't he check? Like, getting your oil portrait done takes a long time. You have to sit there in the same place, in the same position for weeks and weeks, if not months. It's not like getting a caricature done at a carnival, like, Doo -doo -doo -doo, there you go, there's your oil painting. <laughs> you would think, at some point, halfway through this process, the guy would get up and like, hey, let's have a look, see how she's coming along. Uh, oh, hey, uh, can I talk to you for a second, son? Um, whew, boy, look, um, I'm not trying to tell you how to do your job or anything, but uh, could you not make my hair look fake? Here's why I ask. <laughs> you see, years from now, uh, decades hence, when this uh, portrait is hanging uh, in my guild's hall of fame, as it were, and uh, people who will have no idea whether I lived or died, uh, we'll see this. This will be the only proof that I ever walked upon this planet. Uh, I'd rather these, uh, these future people, uh, in this fleeting glimpse they get of, of me, uh, rather that these uh, generations yet unborn, rather that when they see this, my official oil portrait, uh, the first thought not be, uh, huh, wig. So I tell you what, um, perhaps if I make it worth your while, I'll slip you a few extra hundred dollars. Um, Perhaps you could help me achieve an illusion I was unable to achieve in life. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of your stay in Montreal. <laughs>